Okay, and we are live. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Live Reality Games Survivor Recap Podcast. Uh, my name is Taylor Luke, and I will be guiding you through this week's episode. Um, this week is the Greenhouse's week to host um, the Survivor Recap, uh, which is very exciting. The Greenhouse 5 All-Stars is airing right now. In fact, the finale is a week from tomorrow. So if you can't get enough live reality games, check us out because it's a good time to hop on. And I got to say, whenever they were recruiting everyone to do the podcast to recap this season, I had a little birdie in my ear that this week's episode would be the biggest episode in Survivor history. And boy, <laughs> was it an episode. Let's go. I'm going to pull in my guest for the night. It is Greenhouse All-Star, Maddie Miller. Hey, Maddie. What's up, Taylor? How are you? How are you? Pretty good. You know, just living life, work, school, live reality games, repeat. <laughs> Yeah, you get it. You get it. Maddie is a seasoned veteran of our games. As you could tell, she was an all-star on our Greenhouse series. Um, so Maddie, uh, how has playing live reality games changed the way you watch the real show? Um, watching and playing, but more so playing with some of the people that we have in our games really has gotten me to think about you know, what would that person do in this situation? And is that going, like, what kind of strategies can evolve from what these people are doing? And, like, kind of taking notes from other people that I've played with and, like, doing things that I wouldn't necessarily go to do. But watching this, I'm like, okay, well, if you're in that situation, nobody knows who you are and you can do whatever you want. So it's kind of making me, you know, really think a little bit more outside of what I normally do and hopefully like telepathy to these people like hey <laughs> do this <laughs> but yeah I mean just kind of a new outlook really yeah I uh it's really interesting to watch as a host because I'm just used to like thinking through, okay, what are the ramifications if everybody hangs on to everything and then plays them here? Um, so I just always have notes for Mr. Jeff Probst, but, uh, <laughs> but Jeff, if you're watching, I'll love you. Uh, but anyway, um, so I, I took notes throughout the evening and let's just go through the episode. Seems pretty, pretty simple. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay, so the episode starts with um, the Purple Tribe. I do not know the tribe name, so forgive me. Uh, with the Purple Tribe feeling so much hope um, after the medevac from last episode. Um, <laughs> as a host, I think we are never doing this because it's way too dangerous. Do you mean like the challenges and stuff? Look, my biggest note for Jeff Probes is to give those people helmets. Helmets, shin guards, knee pads. I don't think it will hurt the aesthetic of the show. In fact, I think you could get kind of cute with it, Jeff. But anyway. <laughs> um, so <laughs> um, everybody is so relieved that no one's getting voted out. And Banu immediately comes clean with... Um, him revealing all of his tribes, like dynamics and secrets to everyone last week. Um, so what are your thoughts as far as him doing that in the first place and him revealing it to his tribe? I think him doing it, like revealing his tribe secrets wasn't a terrible idea. It could really bond him with some members from the other tribe. And when we see them you know, going and talking to their other tribes after that journey, you can see everyone have real sympathy for Banu. And I feel like that would be a fine move. The thing is, you can't tell your tribe that you did that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I um, I think especially when you're as on the bottom as Banu, um, I would, I, I think it's totally fine and fair and the right thing to just throw everyone under the bus. Uh, that's very my MO when I play Survivor. If I'm not feeling my tribe at all, I will absolutely burn it to the ground. Uh, but that's just my kind of approach. <laughs> uh, 
But I, I do think that, um, yeah, it's always just full measures from Banu. Like he's mm -hmm. going to, whatever he wants to do, he's going to do it to the fullest. So like he wanted to tell everyone everything. He wanted to beg on his knees. He wanted to pray to God and scream at God. Um, shout out to God, by the way. And... Uh, <laughs> I don't want to it. I was like, my, my man. Um, and I think that he's being a little bit facetious if he's saying that uh, he didn't realize that people would be upset with him because he did not reveal that information until after Tribal was canceled. So I, I think that's my um, that's my biggest critique of Banu, I think, as a character is I think that he's often acting like he is outside of the game morally. But I think he does actually understand a lot of it. Maybe that's an edit issue. But anyway. So um, what made me laugh a lot was whenever, I think it was Kinsey. Uh, it, Kinsey and Tiffany were talking about uh, his I want to win a million hearts line, which is crazy, by the way. And uh, one of them said, win a million hearts, go volunteer. And the, yes. question, the question that I wrote down is, what do we think about people who are bad at Survivor? Like, that well, I, think, I think we can safely say that Banu uh, kind of brought zero skills to the table. What, yes. <laughs> what are the pros and cons of casting uh, players like this? Um, pro, it's, I mean, this is for other players. You know, it's an easy out early in the game. You know, if you have someone that's truly terrible, um, but also as a player having someone that's that bad if you can convince people to like keep them in they're in a to merge they're never win an individual immunity so you almost never have to worry about them but you might have to suffer through a lot of tribals as a tribe because you have someone so terrible but um i don't know i mean to cast was he good tv Sure, I'll give him that. He was he was okay. He was okay TV, you know. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Um, you know, but I will take someone who is just ferociously bad over mm -hmm. someone who just gives up, quits. Like we'll say, I'm, I'm out. I'm not oh. doing this anymore. I leave the show. Okay, I'd much rather that. have a cast of terrible players than just one person that's like, nope, thanks, but no thanks. So Yeah, absolutely. Bonnie was incredible casting. I have never seen um, such a breakdown on the show before. Um, I was really entranced the entire time, and I would watch Bonnie on probably six more seasons if we would be so lucky. Um, and I think as far as being a player with that kind of person, I, I really think that it kind of – I don't want to say shoehorn theory that once, uh, like, the worse someone is at the game, the better they are to kind of string along and manipulate. But if they get bad enough, then they become just as unpredictable and threatening as the best players, in my opinion, because you can't depend on them. Um, and it's almost worse because you can't even kind of predict what they're going to do strategically. Um, because... Bonnie would just kind of say anything and everything at challenges in front of Jeff, in front of other players that I think even if you want to coach him like Q wanted to, I, you can't uh, – <laughs> uh, in fact, we'll get to that. But I, I think <laughs> <laughs> dependability is everything. And at the point, if you're so bad at the game that you're no longer dependable, then I think you have no place being in the game. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> so uh next up was Tevin and Soda uh singing at camp. And I, I believe the Orange Tribe has yeah, the Orange and Green Tribes have won everything. They have been kind of cruising throughout the entirety of Survivor so far. So I I, I just think it's really interesting to think about how bored you get on the island because really all you could do is think about how hungry you are. Like I I could not imagine how miserable and difficult it is. Like Bonnie was 10 times stronger than me. Like, let me be very clear with every critique I have. I will absolutely flop worse and harder on the island. So let me be very clear about that. But um, disclaimer, could never 
ever. Yes. It's not in my wildest dreams. I I can sit here and watch it, but I am not going to sit here and pretend like I can do it myself. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. So I, I don't know, like what, <laughs> how, what, what's the ideal like strategy in place to be as far as like team leader, like this social person who's just helping everyone have a good time on the show. Um, I, I just, I think that's one of the most difficult parts of the game for me is finding that balance because you just want to be that person to make it more livable for everyone. But I mean, we saw it in this episode that Soda is starting to get targeted potentially um, because of how strong of a presence she is on the tribe. So what, what do you think about that balance? I do think it's hard because you yeah, you selfishly don't want to be bored. So if you can make it less boring or, in, you know, make it more entertaining for yourself and your tribe, you want selfishly to not sit there and just be so bored. But you then have this target on your back. We saw it last season kind of with um, Mama Julie. Like she was kind of like a morale type leader for her tribe. And everyone was like, nope nope, we don't want to bring mom to the end. So you also want to not be this inherent leader of your tribe. And I think Tevin might be in the same ish boat. Like I think he has better connections, like closer connections, um, especially with Hunter. But I do think that he needs to watch himself because if Soda's gone, he's that next just leader. And if he makes it to the merge, other tribes will also see that and want to gun for him, I think. So, I mean, keep soda, take out soda. It's, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, I think, I think he's next after that. Yeah, no, I agree. I think that's another thing that's confusing me a lot, at least with <laughs> um, the more recent new era seasons, because we're really starting to see a pattern with how long these pre-merges are, how few tribe splits they do and tribe swats they do. So really you're just kind of cruising with the same group the whole time. So in, in my opinion, all these people who are thinking about making flips are like taking out the strongest people on their teams. I, I don't think that that's necessary or smart kind of ever, I'm going to go ahead and say. Um, because if so does this person who's like running your tribe and that you're nervous about, don't waste your own tribe's vote to get rid of that person. Let that person be the target for everyone else at the merge. You know, yeah. I think that I, uh, and that's like part of my difficulty with these no tribe swaps is because like genuinely you have to maintain tribe strength the whole time. So like, I kind of lost my train of thought, but um. Like, I, I just think that there's so much incentive in New Survivor to just take out the flops who are not doing anything. Um, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I lost my train of thought, but I, I hope something cohesive came out. <laughs> and, like, if you, if you take out, right, the bad players or the people that are inherently making you lose the challenge, hopefully you can win. And if you still have all those strong people, that just gives much more of a shield for you going forward. Whenever you do have to, you know, face other people. That's not. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Yes, exactly. It's all about who is a threat to actually you. Soda is not a threat to actually Tevin, no. at, at least from what we've seen on the show, you know, um, but Bonnie is a threat to his entire tribe, even though he hasn't, really found his footing ever, you know? But it's because of that yeah. lack of footing that he's going to throw all of y'all um, under the bus. Um, oh, Meredith's asking, do we think that the three-tribe few swap format makes for a better overall season? I have my answer, no. no. I think that, uh, but I also don't think the solution is going to two, two tribes. I, a lot of what I see like on Twitter and people talking about Survivor is, we need to go back to two tribes. We need to go back to two tribes. I disagree. What we need to do is start with three tribes of six and then swap to two tribes of eight at 16 every time, because you want to start with multiple day one groups who are going to stick together, um, but more than two so that it's not just simple math. Um, right. And then it'll naturally mix up in the two tribes. Then you get the additional things for that. In fact, I don't think the show has ever gone from three to two tribes. Um, and it, it's just very frustrating because 
uh, when I host Survivor, that's what I do. And I feel like it leads to really dynamic stuff, but it also isn't as crammed and forced and pushes out physically smaller players the way that I'm seeing on Modern Survivor. But that's just my critique. Uh, Jeff, if you're, if you're watching, I love you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Um, and yes, Dustin brings up a really good point. Like they take Flint and everything away from the weakest tribe. And if you're having a challenge every day, because it's two days, it's an yeah. LRG wall out in Fiji. Um, it's like, how, how are you going to get these people to strength to keep going? Like how you, like you just, we saw it last season. We see it this season. Like what you lose, you're done. Like half of your tribe just gone immediately. Like yeah, no hope. Which, which moving forward is only going to incentivize people to take out the physically small people, which is kind of lame. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it out loud. Yeah. Um, and yes, Meredith, I agree. Some physically small players throw down at challenges. But, um, and, and I agree, but just that stigma that like, um, I, I guess just like, what, what's what's the word? Um, just, just that- uh, it's, maybe? it's the traditional line of thinking on Survivor and specifically a lot of the challenges are lift this 500 pound gecko right now. Um, right. But I, I agree. I think that everyone brings something to the table. And I think that the, and I think that any sense to vote out physically smaller people um, is mistaken or at least should be. <laughs> the challenges should be should be built to where it comes down more to puzzles or more to like equalizing factors that everybody can bring something to the table. Even if your like thigh muscles are big enough, bigger than my head. <laughs> Shout out to Hunter, by the way. But anyway. <laughs> yeah, like, so far this season, what most, there's been like some puzzle at the end of our immunity challenges, but all the individual ones have been really puzzle based and not necessarily just, physical based and i'm like why why can't we get a, a good mixture right like i need a little bit more of like give me some more sweat challenge like individual challenges not just like make this cube like give me something give me something physical also in the individual ones like make make you make them work individually yeah, no, and as a prize no, I'm really into that critique. I haven't really seen that as much. That many of these these like little like advantage challenges are largely like brainy and figure it out, which I like from the sense of like more players are capable of winning it, or at least uh, more strategic players are capable of winning it. <laughs> but I, I don't know. I would like to see more variety in the hunts. Which shout out to Greenhouse. I think we do that. <laughs> oh, that's just me. Um, <laughs> Okay, let's talk about this green green tribe drama. Okay, so Jim found the Beware Advantage last week and found the box in the dark, iconically. Iconic. Um, and today she planted it again. So I have a few rule questions. So one, famously, the beware advantage takes away someone's vote, right? Mm -hmm. So as soon as y'all go to tribal, I feel, people are going to walk up to the voting booth and see that they actually have a parchment that they can write on. So I don't know. I, I wish I saw a little bit more from the narrative of the episode who they thought lost the vote. I assume Maria because she was the one who like jumped on it. But anyway, I just think that there are so many ways to get caught in the lie that it's too risky for my taste, for at least what I've seen from the Green Tribe, especially because, like, they're split into more or less gender alliances. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't know how comfortable Jim feels within that. I don't know how comfortable she feels with Charlie's vote and relying on Charlie's vote. Um, so I don't know. I felt like it was getting a little too cute. What do you think? <laughs> Um, yeah, I think they, I think that the green tribe is kind of catching on, like someone has it and they replanted it because yeah. they dug to the roots of that poor baby tree. I'm like, it's not there y'all. It ain't, it's y'all ain't gonna find it. But I think in, from Jim's perspective, she's probably thinking I'm going to find this 
uh, like once we have to go to tribal, I know where I have to go to get this and I'm going to figure it out before we ever go to tribal and I don't have to worry about my vote being lost. That's a little too risky for my taste also because, but you can always play it off. Like no one knows who doesn't have the vote. So if that, someone thinks it was planted, then everyone's going to try to figure out who doesn't have it. And you can just lie your ass off and be like, yeah, I voted in the last tribal. Someone else must have not had like, you know, and just it turns into a whodunit murder mystery. <laughs> Yeah, I know. And I, I think that Jim ultimately did a good job of pinning it on Tim, at least from what we saw in the episode. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But just again, like as soon as she ultimately pulls out the idol, I feel like you're going to lose a lot of credit and um, legitimacy from your own tribe. And I just don't know if Jim is in the position to need to do so much. Like, I feel like Tim is already someone that she could have taken out pretty Sorry, Tim, easily. Because um, I, I feel like this is the kind of play that someone like Venus needs to do. You know what I mean? Like Venus, who yeah. has very few connections, whose only friend broke his arm 100 times. And like, I feel like she's the kind of person who needs to stir up paranoia potentially, um, because that could get her both a vote from paranoia and then a vote from the idol that she has. But I don't think... Jim needs that kind of one-two punch to like get to the merge. I think that she's honestly kind of yeah. coasting, at least from what we've seen in the edit. But um, yeah. I don't know. These are my takes. <laughs> also, I like. I agree that it's just fun. Like it. It makes for like yes. a fun dynamic. And like you said, they're bored out of their mind over there. Yeah. Like they also haven't had to. They haven't had to go to tribal. They haven't had to like mentally sweat and get you know the paranoia of having to vote someone out right so maybe this is just her way of like making entertainment for herself no and that that all makes sense and honestly i will always sign up for players who are fun and yeah. i think that's the point of all of this um that i mean that's how i would approach an lrg like ours yeah. shout out to allergies um and sorry i was looking at the comments i um yeah, that's just what I think. But also, if I was playing for a million dollars, I would be extremely conservative. And I'm interested to see a player who actively rejects all of Jeff's different twists. I think that is one angle that we haven't seen yet. Um, and I would love to be the one to do it as I get 15th place. <laughs> but um, I, yeah, I just want to see someone legitimately just be conservative, hang on to their vote and their agency and say, no, I'm not doing that. That's what I yeah. think. Anyway, because famously there's like a, a an unreleased part of Fans vs. Favorites where Parvati found the immunity idol on Exile Island. I don't know if you've ever heard of this, but she found the idol at like the final six and then left it on the island because she didn't need it. Like it, it's that kind of restraint that I think isn't being visibly rewarded on the show. And I feel like um, the show isn't what taking is seriously the option of not doing anything. Um, was I don't it know. like a beware advantage or was it just like a regular idol? It was, it was a straight up idol. I, if I remember correctly, it was something like everybody would more or less like completely search the person who came back. So it would be obvious whether or not she had it. And she knew that she, and I, be, I believe that she knew that she was safe so that uh, if she was asked to play on someone else, it might mess up like the hierarchy and like the, um, the optics of her loyalties on the tribe. Yeah. You know, that's so interesting. she purposely removed her power from herself um to avoid yeah. stepping on toes which is interesting and part of the premise of the greenhouse if you want to watch us <laughs> <laughs> okay so, <laughs> so we finally get a reward challenge and the purple tribe wins reward and i want to say that i felt so happy for q specifically um because even though i rolled my eyes when he tried to quit last week um I, I was just happy that he finally got a win that he, like, could shoulder. At least that's what I saw from the edit, personally. I don't totally dial into the challenges, but he, like, scored four in a row, right? <laughs> yeah. He did He did pretty good, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's all I have to say about the challenge. <laughs> okay, I have a question. 
do we like that the tribes can trade rewards that they win? Okay, so what I was just thinking about this. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, you go first. I feel like I'm talking too much. <laughs> I, speaking on the that challenge, I was thinking like, it almost feels so demoralizing to have one, like as the smallest tribe, won the most food, but not be able to do anything with it and having to, I like the idea that you can trade. So like, ideally it makes sense for them because they couldn't, what are they going to do with raw fish? You know, like yeah. you can't, you can't cook it. Like you're just going to eat raw fish, sushi. I don't know. But, um, I like the idea that you can trade, but I felt, I also feel like as a tribe, it can be like, that could also feel so demoralizing. Like we have 10 fish for four people and we can't keep it. Yeah. I think that, I think that it's kind of a, um, <laughs> iconic Meredith thank you for the support even though you're not watching Survivor this season we love you um I I really like it I really like it but I also think that it's against kind of the MO of the entire new era of like too bad so sad like <laughs> I feel like if they were consistent they would say no you lost that reward so you get this one if you wanted a tarp you should have won the tarp but <laughs> I don't really like that kind of at all. I prefer uh, giving players options and giving players full information. Um, so players having full information of all the rewards that they've had available and knowing that they just need to win one challenge in order to get basic necessities that they've been denied the entire time because they lost every challenge. But um, anyway, so <laughs> I like player choice and agency. So I'm pro, even though I think that this production decision is against what they, what the production is trying to do artistically. <laughs> makes sense. Makes sense. Um, okay. I have a question about Liz. Liz has only said that she is allergic to things so far, and I need confirmation about what she actually can eat. Have we gotten any confirmation? Mm -hmm. I actually am pretty concerned because she can't have coconut. I don't think they get rice. Not yet they haven't, but... Do they get rice? I don't know. I but mean, they did last way. season. Yeah, but I, for, I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. I, look, hey, I am a Survivor big fan, not necessarily a super fan right now, so I don't know all these details. Um, if oh, anyone... I just remember I just remember last year vividly just holding <laughs> the bag of rice and cutting it. And it was like, y'all got to make a decision because your rice is running out. Yes, I remember that too. But I don't know if that was like a replenishment or like a, this is the first time you've seen a grain since you've been on this island. But I don't know. Clearly, there has to be something or else she would like collapse at this point. But uh, right. anyway, major kudos to Liz. Speaking of people who are stronger than me, uh, <laughs> I could not. I could not do that. You could not make me do that. So shout out to Liz. Um, I was. Liz, I saw some like before and after pictures of people that like when they first get on the island and when they are like at the finale, and I'm like, the great weight loss, but baby, you look ill. <laughs> Couldn't no, be me. It's crazy. No, no. And shout out to everyone who has sacrificed for um, the betterment of social strategy. Um, so let's talk about um, Tevin's really sweet scene with his dad. I think that I, 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 I I'm gonna. Say, I, I really do like the um, the more sentimental and emotional parts of the show. I think that casting has never been better on Survivor. Um, all of my problems have to do with the game mechanics. Um, and I, I don't know. I just thought it was a really cool story. I feel like seeing the emotional growth and journey of people on an individual level is one of the compelling parts of Survivor to me. Um, I don't know. Like, like, you, like You can't be more in tune with yourself until you are fully isolated from the outside world. And I think that yeah. just that journey is really interesting to see. Like you obviously are going to learn so much about yourself about the world, about like, you know, you're going to meet all these other different people from all these other very interesting backgrounds. And like, I almost would be so interested in like a study of like people's day to day life before they go on. And then how it not just necessarily like from the fame, but like how they're like, 
morals maybe or like internal mental workings have changed just from being on the show no i believe it i mean what i would be so thankful i feel i should be thankful absolutely i don't know but anyway i think it's very interesting to be grieving on the show and i'm thankful that tevin shared the story um okay we also got i'm skipping ahead but we also got you know a very emotional story from banu at the at the tribal council and Mm -hmm. i thought that was a very um i i think we've gotten maybe a little like bits and pieces of his story but for him to just really like be so open in front of everybody and just like i want to share this before i leave and like spout of inspiration i was like i really i really i i too enjoy those very sentimental moments that they've been putting in the show for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that that's part of the emotional difficulty of the game that I think is underreported or at least underestimated um, is just the difficulty of just voting out people that you're suffering with, uh, like voting out people who like, it's honestly very like retreat like, you know, like you're kind Mm of isolated you're really only you and your thoughts. All you have is to get to know these people. And you have to, like, send a bitch home. You know? Yeah. Like, that, I, I I don't know. I just think that, because I know it's difficult from playing, like, our two-day games, which is, like, whatever. But yeah. imagine <laughs> after, like, a week of having sunburns with you. Like, right. <laughs> like you know, or, or just, like, hearing life stories, because I'm sure that they told, I'm sure that Bonnie shared part of his story with the tribe, like, at night, like, as they were trying to fall asleep or something, you know, like, yeah, you get to know other people so deeply, you get to know yourself so deeply. So like, shout out to Survivor as a mental health journey. (laughs) Famously therapeutic game show Survivor. Yes. But yeah, like how that I can't even fathom that, like getting to know someone on such an emotional, personal level and hearing about their hardships and everything and then turning around and being like, yeah, I am taking away that million dollar chance from you. Like how hard, like how difficult. Which I which like, let me be clear. I do realize that this is the central premise of the show. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I just feel like you get those kinds of emotional, just like morally shocking reactions in the very early seasons. And I feel like as the show has gone on, it's gotten very just gamey, gamey, which I mean, we all love, obviously. But I feel like this tonal shift since COVID, honestly, has been a really good way to kind of just inject that humanity back in the show. And I don't want to act like it hasn't been there for a while, but I think it's a big focus and a big active presence in the difficulty of the show in the way that it hasn't necessarily uh been. i don't know so anyway shout out to that shout out to the casting team um okay so let's talk about uh banu and kinsey i thought it was hilarious that banu pretty much reacted in his confessional the exact way they expected him to. So he was mad. Uh, he needed time to himself. He felt devastated. He wanted to just uh, vote everyone on his team out. And yeah. he felt disrespected, which honestly, I do think he has been disrespected. Um, but I also haven't been living with him for 100,000 hours. So I don't, I don't know if patience is running thin legitimately. But I do know that... Um, <laughs> As soon as Kinsey apologized, we cut straight to a confessional of Banu being all good and back in the game. Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Any big yeah. reaction to this scene? I just thought it was funny. It's funny. And I I was watching that scene, and he just comes back, you know, from his little coaching session um, with Q. And then they're back at the hut, and he's trying to – he's like, but I want to practice with you, Kinsey. I want you whatever. And if I'm Q, I'd be like, what the fuck is going on right now? Like, what do you, what, what, wait a minute, time out. <laughs> Something is so fishy right here. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I, I think it's just part of the difficulty of 
socialization where kind of everyone's wrong. <laughs> you know, like it is ridiculous that he's asking them to teach him how to play. And it is ridiculous that they have to do that. But at the same time, like, you need to foster this person so that whenever the merge does come, he doesn't light you on fire the way socially, the way that he's able to. Like, you know? So, like, yeah. it's just consistent compensation for the shortcomings of every single person, um, which is just the game. But um, I think it's funny to see it just so concretely. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk about Maria crying after flopping at the challenge. So I think that that made me more confident in a Maria win than ever. By the way, everyone, Maria is my winner pick. Let me be very clear. I'm obsessed with her, and I'm mad that I am not on the island in Charlie's position. It would be it would be crazy. It would be crazy. But anyway, um, because I think a tribe genuinely comforting you after you flopped shows you just how socially secure you are in your group. <laughs> like there was no one genuinely bothered by the fact that she didn't necessarily do well in the challenge. Like everyone was ready to move on, but her, you know, like it's really the opposite position of Banu. <laughs> and I guess, but like to, like it was a, it was a reward challenge. It wasn't necessarily like an immunity. So like in the grand scheme of things, maybe it was like a low, lower risk. Like they, you know, like if it was an immunity challenge, maybe things might've gone a little different. Maybe. Yeah. And maybe, and maybe, but I don't but know. Like winning, winning challenges gives you the ability to have this kind of security and comfort. Um, yeah. So Regardless, uh, she's been able to take advantage of uh, the success that um, she's earned on the show. Um, <laughs> also, I want to see in writing in the rule book that Jeff will never lie to you. I thought that was so funny. I was like, but would he? Like, would yeah, he? Yeah, no, because someone tweeted um, <laughs> the Survivor 41 cast, like, whenever this that one group, like, won immunity, and then Jeff said, actually, never mind. Um, worst ever. But anyway. <laughs> um, Jeff, I don't trust you. But Jeff, if you're watching this, I love you. <laughs> I love you, and you make, and you only make perfect decisions. And yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. So then we go back to Jim and the idol craziness. So I, I just, again, think that it's way too much. Like, I don't think Tim is this big target that you need to do all this kind of like social maneuvering to get out. I haven't seen anything impressive from him, but that's also just because he's kind of barreling on the show at this point. Um, and I, I don't know. I'm just a big believer in you can only lose the game on day nine. You know, you are not going to clinch the victory on day nine. Like, I, I'm just a very conservative player when it comes to this kind of stuff. Like, just go for longevity and, like, around the top seven, you can figure out a path. Unless you have flopped completely. It's just kind of my MO. I don't, I don't know. What do you think about that? <laughs> I think it's a – I definitely think it's a balance because, yeah, if you think about the end game way too early, you lose that short-term sight of, like – the obvious things that are right in front of you because you're just you're just thinking about way down the line um so yeah i think but also like if you're not like if you're not thinking about like these are the people that are potentially going to be at the end with me and you kind of like don't have any sense of that long that long-term sight i think you screw yourself there too so i mean it's a it's a hard balance because like you all like I think yes right now is way too early to try to be doing all of this and like think oh this is gonna be so great and I can like talk about this in jury you know or uh in the finals or whatever and it's just like I, you got a lot of game left to play man like and this might backfire on you <laughs> like no honestly because. Yeah, I just think that there's a lot of stress on the game's only 26 days. 
You got to make a name for yourself. You got to get moving. You got to dig deep and you got to move now. And it's big moves, big moves, big moves. Cause you only have 26 days or like yada, yada, yada. Yeah. You hear it 100 times. And I just really don't think mechanically that's what we're looking at personally. Cause I don't think anything anyone has done in pre-merge has secured them a win in the history of Survivor. Correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe what Tom Westman Palau, because like the whole game was the pre-merge, but I don't think that counts. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's just kind of what I think. I, I just think all you need to care about is survival to the merge and bring everyone who's better than you with you. Cause they'll lose. Yes. I don't know. Um, so, so you do you subscribe to the shield theory then? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Who was, someone was saying they don't. I might have been on a, uh, one of our greenhouse podcasts, but someone was like, "I don't agree with the shield theory," and I was like, "But why?" <laughs> no, I think that genuinely, the like sixth best player should win every time. If everybody's playing well, I think the sixth best player. Ish should win. In my opinion. <laughs> it was shame. <laughs> you need to take the hit. Like it is an elimination game, so you need to have people who will be eliminated before you. Yeah. You know, I mean, you have to have the foresight to have people who are stronger than you in front of you. Mm -hmm. That's what I think. I don't know. It's all timing, and I just don't think the pre-merge is ever the time to do anything, personally. And hey, maybe I'm talking too like all in on this idea. But that is genuinely my belief. Um, but anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay, we talked about soda being a target. Um, yeah, I, I, I've i talked about my uh, thesis for playing Survivor in modern day. <laughs> modern day. Uh, just don't touch anyone who like can actually win the game. Because people who can actually win the game can actually lose the game. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just kind of saying stuff. Okay. Okay. Mariah can't jump. What, <laughs> yeah. I, have, what I have written down is literally what does that mean? I what does that mean. I was so joked. I was when I first heard it, I was like, like afraid of heights, like can't jump off of a box or something. Or no, like. She said, I have a low center of gravity. And then I was like, baby. <laughs> like, it's just like lifting her legs and putting them back down. That was crazy. No, that actually, like, I cannot compute why that is the case. <laughs> like, why? Like, how, like, okay, 25 baby years old and you can't jump? How? Like, just at least a little bit. Like maybe a skip, maybe a skip. Can you jump forward? Can you jump backward? I feel like we only focus on vertical. Like just legitimately muscularly, I like I just don't know how that works. Like I, I <laughs> like how have you gone this long in life and not had to had to jump? Like it makes me question, know. what was your childhood like? It's like <laughs> no, it's like we're talking low center of gravity and stuff, like what happens on a trampoline? And I am being so serious. I know. Like I need, I need, um, I need a live feed cam of her after this with a coach learning how to jump. That's what I, I bet she jump. can jump. I bet she can jump. I bet this is an act. Truly, though, know. like how can you? How can you not? How can you not jump? Okay. In question, because I wasn't like uh, I, I zone out during the challenges. Straight up, did they zoom in on her jumping off the platform? They did. Was it bad? I mean, it was. It was honestly just like kind of cute because like you run and you really don't have to jump. You can just run straight off and you get right. a little bit of distance just from that. But all all she did was run off and lift her feet. <laughs> it's really so there was no there was no like vertical like push. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, I stand corrected. I thought that they like hid it from us during the challenge to hide her secrets. <laughs> Hide her secrets. Anyway, um, it was when she said, "Can we have a jumping practice?" I was like, 
ma'am. That is iconic. I'm sorry. That is iconic. That is iconic. Um, <laughs> okay. So anyway, Mariah is my favorite contestant of all time. Um, some other funny things from the challenge. Banu just like skipped an obstacle. Shout out to that. Shout out to that. Um, someone said. What was he thinking? <laughs> someone like said, there's these steps, and you just no, just no. <laughs> look, I don't know. Instructions are everything. But again, shout out to the greenhouse game, uh, where we have a couple interesting rules in the challenge is that players have missed whenever there are big opportunities. That was a really bad like ad for the greenhouse. Like I wasn't very eloquent there, but um, <laughs> know, know that whatever I said, interpret that in the most fun way possible and mm -hmm. give it a watch. watch. Yep. Um, okay. Another thing that happened is someone yelled out Michael Jordan, baby. And then um, what's his name? The blonde guy. Hunter. Hunter. And then Hunter did like a granny throw. Iconic. And got it. That's right. That's and got right. it. But, but made all three shots in a row. Like no miss. At least the edit. And no it. miss. No shout out. Um, and yeah, those were all my shout outs from the challenge. Do you have another shout out from the challenge? Let's see from the challenge. Shout outs. Hmm. Um. <laughs> Poor Tim, he jumped from that one platform and just tried to land. He did land straight on the other one. I'm like, baby, you can no, that was. I thought that he was injured. I thought that he was he injured. Knew. I was he like, knew. are we about to have a second medevac in a row? But anyway, shout out to Tim. I look forward to you getting voted out instead of medevac. <laughs> um, and uh, he also, for the reward challenge, got out of the boat to try to like get on the buoy to like get the key instead of what everyone else did was keep one foot inside the boat and then one foot on the buoy to get it. I'm like, and this man's just trying to jump on it and he's just flipping it upside down the entire time. I'm like, my dude, shout out to you, Tim. Shout out to you, Tim. Take the whole pier with you. Quick just shout out to Tim. Quick shout out to Tim. Okay. <laughs> so purple loses again. Raise your hand if you're surprised. Clap if you're surprised. Crickets. <laughs> Crickets. Crickets. Oh. Okay, so anyway, the episode, and look, I feel bad that they got 90 minute episodes for this season because it seems like a pretty straightforward pre-merge so far, largely because of production's doing. But, um, yeah, I, I love all the character development, though. I, I think that mm -hmm. um, I still think it's an incredible show, and I want 90 minute episodes forever. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about um, the final breakdown of Banu. Yes. Um, okay. So, uh, uh, what what moment do you want to start with? I want to start off with cursing God. Okay, we can start off with cursing God, um, and then cursing move God. into begging on your knees. Begging on your knees? No, I got actually very uncomfortable for that. Yes, because Tiff was like, "No, get up." Like get it, she had to threaten to just walk away for him to visit. I'm like, if you don't get your ass up, I'll just saying, I swear. But anyway, no, right now, and just like, I, I think it is also just lost. Like that, it's a million dollar game, and I don't know if that's. Uh, I, I I think that it was more desperate to just have the experience because he claims that he's just a big super fan, and I think he just genuinely wanted to go as long as he can and like win a million hearts. Yeah, exactly. Uh, he didn't. He didn't care about the money. He wanted. He wanted the people's hearts. Yeah, I know. But just personally, what makes me so uncomfortable about the begging is that it is ultimately a game for money, and yes. I, I don't know. Like I, I just could barely watch that scene. I just really don't like. I just really don't like. That. <laughs> um, <coughs> I love the Mount Everest line, and then it panned to him like climbing the mountain. Climbing. <laughs> yeah. um, <coughs> I think that. Uh, yeah, that's kind of everything I have. Um, cursing God is crazy. <laughs> yes, because we go from we go from the episode previous asking for a sign and praising God like it. Believing yes, in God, God is real. God, he he gave me this sign. Like thank you, thank you to pissed off at God 
I'm like, man. Yeah, that was hilarious to me because uh, he had the same temperament with God that he did with his tribe. As soon as they forgive him, he's all good. <laughs> as soon as God sends him a sign, he's all good. <laughs> and as soon as it's not working out, <sighs> no one. Uh, there's bad blood everywhere. There is. There is. Like, he's a uh, he's very he's very emotional, and I feel like also I also <laughs> have no room to talk. But like from this experience, like I'm sure everyone's emotions are like super high. But like yeah. I feel like he's an emotional person in day to day life, also. <laughs> yeah. You know um, I mean? No, th this game is very intense. Allergies are very intense, and I just think that every player and every host should check in with every player to make sure that they know exactly what they're signing up for. Because honestly, like I know this for my games, like I'm not trying to make anybody have a breakdown. I, I want everyone to have a good time. I want everyone to want to do it again. I think it's more fun that way. I think the games are better that way. And I, I don't know, I think there were times that um, I just really felt bad for Banu for just being in that situation in general, you know? Yeah. Whatever he wanted to say, so I, I don't know what he says now. I do have one more question for you before we get to the iconic tribal. Uh, would you want God to send you on Survivor to be fourth boot? <laughs> <laughs> Did I want God to send me on Greenhouse All Stars to get booted second? No, but there I was. <laughs> so, um so does that mean that you would not do it at all or would you do it and lose? Is it worth doing if you lose so early? Yeah. Like if it's something you want to do and it's the experience that you want to go and experience, absolutely. It's worth it every time. Like no yeah, matter when yeah. you get out, like. That's what I think. I think the worst is to be like second boot because everyone remembers first boot. No one remembers second boot. You're not going to be iconic. Um, even though I think the one this season was iconic. <laughs> I forget her name. Oh, Jess. Yes. Shout out to Jess. Oh my God, uh, Jess. Jess was robbed. Um, Jess is my favorite contestant of all time. But um, <laughs> no, I would still want to do it. Just like, you yeah. know, experience it. I think that there's plenty to win out there. And I think that there's reasons to do this just in general. And I mean, especially on Survivor, the show itself. I mean, Bonnie still got to tell a story. Still got to represent other Banus out there. And I don't know, I would ask God to send me. Yeah. <laughs> yes. If it was so, in my heart, if it was in my heart and like to go out and, and represent on that particular show, yes. Send yeah, me no, I don't get this order I am. Mm -hmm. Anyway, by the way, God, if you're watching, shout out. Shout out God. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, I also have this. Um, so Banu said that I've given everything to this game. I've given everything to this game. I've given everything to this game. And I thought, you know, maybe you should have given 60%. Yes. You know, and genuinely, I think that the 60% effort strategy is uh, something that everyone in social strategy games needs to do. I think as soon as you show people that you care, you become the kind of person to get targeted, you know? Because, I mean... I, I mean, look at the Orange Tribe. Soda is the one who most visibly cares, mm -hmm. I think. And she's the one getting targeted. I yep. think Hunter is I think Hunter is giving 60% social effort. <laughs> is doing great. Absolutely. Because every time they're singing Kumbaya, he's like, looks like he hates the world. <laughs> he's yes. like having no part of it. He's like, no. Yes. Part. No. So, and I mean, look at the Green Tribe. I mean, you have Ben giving everyone motivational speeches all the time. You have Charlie yelling Taylor Swift as he's jumping into the water. I think it's Maria who's given just, who's just staying cool. Yeah. Just do not show how much you want it, in my opinion. Yeah. In my opinion. And I think that's also why, in my opinion, Tiffany is the strongest player on the Purple Tribe and has been this whole time. You know? I agree. I think he has been a visible leader. I think that he's been very vocal and just pushing things forward. I think Kinsey has just been very, like, openly, like, just social, 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 butter everyone up. I think Tiffany is just playing it cool, like, giving 60% of a damn. And I think that's what you need to do. So, anyway, those are my, those are the three top players, in my opinion. Tiffany, Hunter, and Maria. I think... 
Liz is also in the 60% category. Don't think she's the top player in per se, you know, there, but I think she's within that same vibe. You know, I'm not really sure why she's there because she always likes to talk about, you know, she has all the. I, I, I think she's in the top 1%. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, I don't know. <laughs> um, but anyway, I think. Oh, and then uh, let's get to the tribal council. It's crazy that they didn't even vote, right? Okay, I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, okay, if <laughs> if y'all were planning like a blind side, let's say Q and um, Tiff were gonna have a blind side on Kinsey, and obviously you're not gonna say that in the tribal council. And like Jeff was just like, okay, so that's it. Okay, great. I'm like, no. No, but I think, no, I think if that was the case, I think that they would have done a straight up vote. Um, but I, I, gen, I honestly, I don't know. I think part of it was wanting to send Banu off in that way. I, I think that just, yeah. uh, honestly, for Banu, I think that this was the best way for him to go out. Um, <laughs> just seeing how he's reacted to falling to the bottom throughout these episodes, I think, um, I think a blind side would have been crazy to watch. Um, I don't know. But anyway, shout out to Banu. You are my number one pick to come back for Survivor New Era All-Stars. And I hope to see you play six more times if you would want to. Uh, <laughs> okay, I think God we should to... Again. I, I hope God sends you six more times. Mm -hmm. um, should we get to MVPs? Sure, let's do that. Okay, let's each say our MVP for the episode, and it has to be an active contestant. It cannot be God. It cannot be God. Okay. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Hmm. Honestly, I I feel like I can only give it to someone who voted. I have difficulty giving props to anyone on teams that win immunity because I feel like we don't see any actual strategy and i feel like these are the kinds of episodes to just like put in filler or maybe some misleading content so i won't give it to one of the winning tribe members i think i want to give it to tiffany because i think that um tiffany did the best job of actually uh, i think tiffany did the best job of just letting banu go easy um yeah. and i think that she has been the most solid on her tribe this whole time um and yeah, I just think that she has played the best game of the Purple Tribe, even though I'm nervous for them as a whole. I, I just, I'm all in on Tiffany, personally. Yeah, I, I I can see that theory of like not giving it to one of the other tribes, but then that only leaves me with three options here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I kind of also, I, I, I might want to give it to Hunter because this man really comes in clutch with all of these accuracy things mm -hmm. like michael jordan granny shot but made it <laughs> that like he he <coughs> he is one of the reasons why i think that orange tribe is is winning could oh could absolutely assist. absolutely i kind of yeah. want to give it to, to him also yeah and if i was to name one on the green tribe i would give it to maria just because but mm -hmm. also that's just like kind of my season long feelings which i guess was why i picked tiffany in the first place um but yeah, my official official locked answer is Tiffany. Um, okay, great. So that's kind of everything I have in my notes. Was there anything else you wanted to talk about from this episode? From this episode? Hmm. What are your thoughts if you were in Venus's situation? You're... Mm -hmm ally the only one that you feel like you could trust because you think everyone else is against you just went home let's say you go to tribe tribal next week you know this is going to take to assume they don't keep steamrolling as a tribe what's what's your plan what should venus's plan moving forward be um very difficult i would be like because that's the other thing these tribes are so small there's just so few options just kind of throughout the entire game now. Um, like, I don't know what I would do. I mean, let's assume that all these different dynamics are something that she could at least sense just vibes-wise. So just like assuming this, um, 
like maybe she could get uh she could hear Hunter or um what's his name? Tevin say something just off about soda or something and maybe start pushing for soda. Though also also she's supposed to be very close to soda, but also soda's the one that she's beefing with the most. Like I I don't know. Really just, interesting dynamic. Very interesting. Like dynamic. Yeah. <laughs> I just honestly don't know enough about what she knows. I think I would maybe start throwing Liz under the bus, trying to make her less popular than me. Or um I don't know. I would start pitching like Ooh, merge, like, let's get rid of some of these big threats, even though strategically I think that's incorrect. Um, I would bank on other people being strategically incorrect and just wanting to make a big move for themselves. Um, I mean, if you're in that position and you are the low man on the totem pole and everyone else is almost, sorry, almost everyone else is perceived a bigger threat than you, what other pitch do you have? You know? Yeah. I, I don't know. You just got to throw everything at the wall. You got to be playing like Jim, but <laughs> Jim's back is not against the wall from what I've seen. <laughs> you to do it. Right, yeah. <laughs> so that was the earth shattering episode. That was the Purple Tribe's third tribal council after their fourth consecutive loss. And they didn't even vote. But how much did we learn about these players? And how much did we learn about each other? Mm. Wow. So shout out to Survivor. Shout out to God. Shout out to Jeff Probst. That's everything I have to say. Do you have anything else to say? No, I'm good. Yeah, good episode. You know, we learned a lot about people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's cute. Mm. Yeah, so um, cool deal. If you want to see more of our type of strategic thinking, please give us a shout out at the Greenhouse Game. We have five seasons. Uh, the fifth one will be complete a week from tomorrow, so you have a lot of catching up to do. Um, the Greenhouse is a lot like Modern Survivor in that there's a lot of moving pieces, but I think that there's more complete information for all the players, so there's some more agency across the board, and I think that we are willing to uh, be dumb and lean into our $5 budget in a way that Survivor is too scared to do. <laughs> um, so anyway, y'all have a good night. Uh, search me on YouTube, Taylor Luke, if you want to see my series. And keep watching Live Reality Games weekly podcast. You know, I love being a part of this community. I love supporting other Live Reality Games. So let's let everyone get the emotional experience that uh, Banu and Tevin experience in this episode. Let's go change the world. <laughs> Let's inspire the world. Let's inspire. Let's go win a million hearts. Um, so anyway, y'all have a good night. That's everything. <laughs>